Hello everyone. So today I'd like to introduce you to the word disassociation. And what disassociation means in therapy terms is basically disconnect. So what happens when someone's going through an extremely traumatic event, the brain in order to survive basically disconnects from the emotions that are part of that event. So what that looks like is when you're having like intense fear and helpless feelings, hopelessness, terror, what the brain does is it basically kind of shuts off that channel and it goes into another response to kind of alleviate your pain or basically escape it. So I'd like to introduce you to the four main trauma responses or basically ways of disassociation. And um, I'm going to use my little buddy here. Um, we'll call him Fluffy. Um, so say Fluffy is going through an extremely traumatic event. Well, not just an event, but it's, it's chronic. It keeps happening. He has an abusive owner that beats him and yells at him and doesn't bring him food and water. So in order to survive, um, the fear and the anger and just all these feelings that he has, what Fluffy does is he disconnects and he goes into the first trauma response. And that is trauma response number one is the fight response. And so what that would look like in Fluffy's situation, it would be him biting, it would be him jumping on his owner, it would be him growling and being mean and just really aggressive. And so in with people, it looks like, you know, those people that you call ragers. Well, when when they just kind of bleh, their anger on other people and they blame and they criticize and they control and they yell and curse and scream and maybe throw things. Um, physical violence comes into this fight response. And so that's what people in the fight response are likely to do in order to escape their feelings of fear and uh, their feelings of trauma. So fighting, unfortunately or fortunately, did not work so well for Fluffy. And so he decided to try trauma response number two, which is the flight response. And in this case, he would be running and running and running or digging under a fence to escape or jumping over a fence to escape or breaking his leash anything to get away. And so what this looks like with people is working, staying busy all the time, just go, 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 never stopping to think, or sometimes overthinking and being so in your thinking brain that you don't be in touch with your emotional brain. And so it's just go, 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 run, 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 and just a quick, um, secret here. Um, this is my go-to response, the flight response. So Fluffy's tried biting so far. He's tried running and he's still being traumatized. So he tries trauma response number three, which is freeze. And basically what that is, is belly up. Just, just take me I'm rolling over. I'm playing dead. There's no hope preparing to die. This is the end. It's all over. And what this looks like in people is basically um, it can be depression, just a giving up on life. It can be apathy. It can just be like a passive attitude towards everything that comes. You know, I can't do anything. I'm helpless there. You no know, matter what I do, nothing works. That's what people in freeze trauma response look like. So rolling over and playing dead did not work. His owner was too smart for that and made him get up again. So Fluffy tries the last trauma response, which is known as fawn. And no, it's not Bambi either. Um, fawning basically means people pleasing. And so what Fluffy in trauma response of fawn would look like would be never begging, you know, always sitting when told, um, bringing the slippers, bringing the newspaper, 
um, just being the best doggy ever, just, you know, being quiet and just being nice and wagging his tail, even if he, you know, is scared. Well, people in trauma response of fawn would be the people pleaser, the codependent type, the helper, the giver, the savior, the rescuer, the fixer. And so, so that's like a breakdown of the four trauma responses. But fortunately for Fluffy here, wow, that's a lot of Fs, um, he has been rescued from his bad, bad home, and he's been placed in a good home, a foster home for little doggies like him, and he's learning what healthy, um, what a healthy life is that's not full of trauma, and he's working on his complex post-traumatic disorder and he's learning how what good communication skills are and standing up for his needs and processing the undealt emotional trauma from his childhood. And he's also making new friends, including a cat, surprisingly. So you never know, like when you work through your CPSTD, there's all kinds of surprises that happen in your life. So I just want to say thank you for Fluffy here for being our cute little example. And um, I will be doing more videos to kind of break down more the more specifics of each of the four trauma responses. But I just want to say, you know, no matter what your go-to is to kind of escape the emotional pain, I grew up with doing the flight and the freeze. I'm sorry, the fight, flight and the fawn response were my go-to. And all the others, you know, were in there too. But I just want to say that it's not your fault. You you needed to survive and that's just how your brain coped. But there is new ways of learning how to be in the world and there is healthy coping behaviors that are not driven by trauma responses. And so I just want to say you are doing amazing work wherever you are in your journey of healing. You are strong and you are brave, and I just want to encourage you to keep going because you never know. There, You may make friends. I'm not saying you have to love cats or anything to be healed, but just just going forward and knowing that you can do it and you can leave the learned behaviors of the past behind and really embrace your new life and find healing wherever you are. So thank you for watching and have a blessed day.